Hello everyone, I am back with an unboxing. Oh my gosh, this is so exciting. I literally just got this. I had to hop off. Uh, Kelly from the Truth and Stories live chat, hopefully. Okay, yeah, my camera quality is good. I had to make sure. I'm on this little wiggly table. It's the best place I can film right now. Uh, the lighting is good, and I am just going to jump in and unbox this. Hopefully, you guys can't see my address in there. <laughs> but yeah, oh my gosh, let me try and open this here. It's a much easier box to open than most. But if you can see here, Game Crafter, that gives you a little hint of what I may have ordered. Divine Gypsy, if you're watching this, you know. Um, and Divine Gypsy actually has this deck and she should be doing an unboxing soon. Oh my gosh. Can I make these boxes easier to open? Just kidding. The harder it is to open, the safer the deck is. So yeah. So, yes. Oh my gosh, and my phone isn't charging. Oh, oh no, oh no, no, no. We cannot have that. So sorry if there's a little bit of jiggling here. I'm just plugging my phone into charge. There we go. All right. Okay, now I feel much more comfortable filming a video. Ooh. Okay, oh, come on, open up. Oh my gosh, really? I don't want to ruin the box because I like to reuse my boxes whenever I can. Yes. Okay, I guess I don't have this deck because this box is not letting me open itself. Let's see, I think I just need to cut this, and it's mine. Oh gosh, still more? What is it? What is, like, keeping you? Oh, it's you. Oh, my gosh, the most impossible box to open. Where is it now? No, am I not opening this right? Or... Like... Okay, I guess we'll just rip it. Ooh, oh my gosh, did you see the box? Oh my gosh. Ooh, okay. Tuck box is meh, basic, you know. Very empty, I will say that. But here it is, the Ashira Tarot. This deck it took apparently 10 years to make. And oh my gosh, it is available on Game Crafter, as I've said before. Let's just try and open this box. It's a very, very thin box, which I'm not a big fan of. This one I actually might take out of this box. Usually I keep them even in their tuck box, but this one is super, super, super thin. Look at that, first edition. So, yeah, this is available on Game Crafter, as I said before. Very, very, very flimsy box, but that's Game Crafter. Apparently Game Crafter isn't that good of a of a quality. Oh yeah, this is, this is paper. This is paper, like literal cardstock. But let's see. Oh my gosh. Very thin cardstock, but you know what? It's what we paid for. But very, very flexible, very, very papery. I don't hate it, but it is very, very thin, like Llewellyn thin. Oh, it is out of order. Let me make sure all the cards are here. So, yeah. One, two, three, four, five, six. 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22, 23, 24, 25, 26, 27, 28, 29, 30, 31, 32, 33, 34, 35, 36, 37, 38, 39, 40, 41, 42, 43, 44, 45, 46, 47, 48, 49, 50, 51, 52, 53, 54, 55, 56, 57, 58, 59, 60, 61, 62, 63, 64, 65, 66, 67, 68, 69, 70, 71, 72, 73, 74, 75, 76, 77, 78, 79, 80, 81, 82, 83, 84, 85, 86, 87, 88, 89, 90, 91, 92, 93, 94, 95, 96, 97, 98, 99, 100, 101, 102, 103, 104, 105, 106, 107, 108, 109, 110, 111, 112, 113, 114, 115, 116, 117, 118, 119, 120, 121, 122, 123, 124, 125, 126, 127, 128, okay, there we go, all 78 cards here, I don't want to ruin anything, oh my gosh, ooh, dude, this deck, honestly, okay, and I'm very sorry for this little wiggly table here, it's what I got to work with, so bear with me right now. I'm going to pause this. I am going to reorganize the cards so we can truly enjoy them in order uh, without getting confused. So I will be right back. Okay, now everything is back in order. And here is uh, the box. Again, the box is super, super thin and flimsy. A little bit of a disappointment. This 
deck is so beautiful. It deserves better cardstock and a thicker box. Uh, the booklet is a little tiny little white book, nothing much to go off of, you know, um, but that's not to worry because there, it is a very, very complex deck. Uh, as you can see, you have a tree of life here, um, with even the color scales, I think, attributed to it. So that's really, really helpful. Um, but she does have a PDF available uh, that is uh, that is 121 pages. I posted this on Instagram. It is such, oh my gosh, it is necessary. It's full of information, tons of references. It's it's Thoth based, but it kind of wants it kind of goes and does its own thing, uh, and that's what she intended intended it to be. Very different, but inspired. You know, like the Marielle. Um, and this one, honestly. It, I, I'll, I'm putting it up there with Marielle and the Margaret Peterson. Even in size, actually, I should go and get uh, one of the Margaret Petersons and the Marielle to compare in size, so I'll be right back. Okay, now I am back. Let's see how big these cards actually are. Ooh, same height as the Margaret Peterson, just a little bit thinner. Uh, and for the Tabula Mundi, another deck that's kind of big and awkward, it's, it is obviously taller and wider than the Tabula Mundi. And let me do the Mary L, which is a much more common deck that a lot of people have. Let me put that over there. Uh, let me hurry up and get this over with because my camera likes to give up after the 20 minute mark. So yeah, as you can see, oh yeah, it's actually like the same height, uh, closer to the size of the Mary L, untrimmed, as you can see here, one of my favorite cards right there. Um, but anyways, now let's just get into this. That's the backs right there. I think we've already talked about that. Okay, there we go. <sighs> so let's just go into this right now. Oh my gosh, look at that. The fool with the alligator. And... Hold on, I gotta check something. Uh, sorry about that. I had to make sure my door was locked. I don't want anyone interrupting this because I... Oh my gosh, I'm going to put my arm like this to hold it steady so I don't, you know... Fall this. I'm going to go like this. Hold it right there. I know it's off, but yeah. Anyways, here's the full. You got the Hebrew alphabet and the element here. The, the alligator, as I was saying, is in another deck that I ordered. The star tarot. Oh, it's gorgeous. You can see him like making that symbol of the Aleph here with his body. Here is the Magus card. Oh my gosh. Oh my gosh. Hold on. I'm going to try I'm actually going to try and zoom in a little more just so that you can see it better. Okay, here we go. I guess that attempt did not work, but you know what? I'm going to do it how I did it with my other deck and hold it up just a little bit. I just want the whole picture and clear for you guys. Look at that with the caduceus here. The peacock feathers, that's very interesting. There's a lot of animal symbolism here. Oh my gosh, the high priestess. She did change this card. If you look up on if you look up her name, the creator is Sarah Wheatley. Uh, and she was working on this for a really, really long time. So um, but she first had this in a different in a different uh, design, but she changed it and I love the new design. The Empress, oh look at her. The salt symbol here. There's tons of symbolism here. Oh, the emperor. You're gonna hear oh a lot because this deck is just gorgeous. The hierophant. Oh my gosh. I'm gonna try not to break it down because then this video will be way too long, and my camera does not like to do really long videos anymore, especially with this quality. So, yes. Oh, the lovers. Chariot here. And all the cards are borderless, unlike some decks, like the Prisma Visions. Oh, this Hermit card. Look at that with the lantern here, just beautiful. Here's the Wheel of Fortune. There's lots of mandalas. If you guys love mandalas, this deck is the deck for you. Justice here, she looks so powerful. Hanging, and set changes to from the Hanged Man. With the life symbol here is just traditional here. Art. Kept from the Thoth. The devil. Ooh, look at the snake and the cat right there. And it's like a mirror. And you can see the devil, the, the symbol for the devil horns there. The tower. Oh, look at that gorgeous tower card. It reminds me of the Ace of Wands, which might be purposeful there. So the star, not one of my favorite stars, but it's still beautiful nonetheless. 
and here is death another mandala the scorpion of scorpio with the moths here and the skeletons of bats snakes whales uh the roses here from the right away smith oh the moon i know color from the truth and story does not like moon faces but i love it i think it's beautiful here's the sun the sun looks a little scary but honestly like everything else about it is just gorgeous Here's Judgment with the seven chakras here, and the this I think this is the, the Sephiroth of Malkuth here, the winged, uh, the eyes on the wings, it's just tons of symbolism here. Here's the universe, oh my gosh, it's beautiful here. And here we go into the minors, the pip cards, the ace of wands right here with the salamander, the volcano, and the moon. Oh. These are not just plain old minor cards here so yeah here we have the two of wands the three of wands a little difficult to see but you can still see the three wands here here's the four of wands oh my gosh again that mandala stuff going on and she does reference the mandala book uh in there so you can see why she put in that the five of wands with the roaring lions oh the Six of Wands, and you can clearly see the uh, astrological associations. It is Jupiter or Saturn in uh, Leo. I always confuse Saturn and Jupiter. I think this is Jupiter uh, in Leo here. The seven of Wands. Oh, the seven-pointed star reminds me of Game of Thrones with the light of the seven. Eight of Wands. Uh, eight of Wands always has like a rainbow in there. The Nine of Wands. Look at that. The Ten of Wands, very guardianship, reminds me more of an Eight of Swords kind of energy. And here we have the Ace of, of, of Cups, uh, with, the pre with the fetus right there growing, and the, do and the descending dove, there's two seahorses, the Two of Cups, the Three of Cups here, the dolphins, very creepy faces sometimes. Four of Cups, oh my gosh. Five of Cups. The Six of Cups. With the Rosicrucian cross up there. The Seven of Cups with the poppies, with the poppy flowers. There we go, trying to find a really good position to show you this. The Eight of Cups, oh, kind of reminds me of the uh, Mountain Tarot Eight of Cups with the clearer kind of see-throughness of it. The Nine of Cups with the Nautilus shells flowing water out. Oh, it's gorgeous. The Ten of Cups with the sharks down there. Oh my gosh. Here we have the Ace of Swords. The Two of Swords making like a scissor here. But the Owl, oh my gosh. Three of Swords. Four of Swords. Kind of like that truce working together kind of five of swords very angelic this one the wasps you can see lots of animal symbolisms if you just look at, if you just look close enough here have the six of swords the seven of swords oh my gosh the eight nine I'm gonna try and speed it up a little here. Oh, look at that, you get, I think this is two trees of life here. And here we have the Ace of Discs, more mandalas, tons of mandalas, and some I Ching in there too. So yeah, the two of discs. Oh my gosh, the three of discs with, oh, the spider webs. Oh, gorgeous. The, fa the four of discs, this radioactive kind of, symbolism here five of discs very creepy five of discs i love it six of discs again that cross right there is always popping up and that's a golden dawn symbol right there the seven of discs i know there's a serpent that looks like this a seven headed serpent with the sickles all oh, gorgeous eight of discs the nine the Ten of Discs, the chakras right here, 
or no, they look like chakras, but it's actually Tree of Life. Ooh, yeah, with the Sun as Tifereth. Oh, makes sense. And now we go into the Quartz. Here we have the Knight of Wands. If you're familiar with the Thoth, it is very Thoth-like with the Queen of Wands here. Gorgeous. This was the first card that she drew for this deck, and she's like, I think she said that she's the patron card uh, for the entire deck, I believe. I think she writes about it in her in that PDF guidebook, so yeah. The Prince of Wands. I like how he's like sitting in the mouth of a lion. The Princess of Wands with the tiger. Oh, as you know, tiger is one of my favorite animals. The Knight of Cups. The Queen of Cups. Look at her. Oh, it's gorgeous. Queen of Cups is always one of my favorite court cards. The Prince of Cups with the scorpion. As you can obviously tell, this card is associated with Scorpio. And here we have the Princess of Cups. The Knight of Swords, ooh, very cloudy, very misty. The Queen of Swords, wait, did I just call this the Queen of Swords? Knight of Swords, I have no idea anymore. The Queen of Swords with the decapitated head. The Prince of Swords. The Princess of Swords, oh my gosh, it's gorgeous, very exact. The Knight of Discs, as you can see, it looks very rooted and grounded. Queen of Discs. She does look a little creepy with that face right there. So yeah. Uh, the Prince of Discs. Taurus, obviously. Oh, just gorgeous. And Princess of Discs with the serpent right there. Oh, just beautiful, beautiful, beautiful. So yeah, as you can see, it is just such a beautiful deck. It is really warm. I even just left the sweat stain right there. Gross. I'm gonna try not to shuffle the cards on that area right there. Uh, it's just really warm where I am right now. But let's see. Let's try shuffling these cards. They should be rather easy to shuffle with the size and the card size. Oh yeah, they shuffle actually really well. Actually very, it seems like Llewellyn cardstock, um, but it seems that like because of the larger size, they're very, very flexible. Um, but they're not too bad. But if you don't like thin cardstock, this is, <laughs> you're not gonna like this deck. So I do hope that maybe later in the future, she can print them in a thicker card stock because I know Game Crafter always does these horrible thin card stocks, but I can live with it. I don't, I don't, I'm not complaining too much about it, but I love these cards. I'm just in love with it. Oh my gosh, they shuffle beautifully. Let me try overhand shuffling, which shouldn't be too hard to do. I'm sorry if I shuffled them off camera, but you know, let me see. Yeah, they, sh they overhand shuffle just fine. You know, good clean cuts, really nice and borderless. There seems to be no misprints. It just looks gorgeous here. Let's let's draw some cards out to show you guys how they look next to each other. Oh my gosh, here it is, the Two of Cups, the Devil, the Hierophant, and the Knight of Swords. Oh, just gorgeous. So yeah, this has been a walkthrough of the Ashira Tarot. You can get it on Game Crafter. Uh, I will link that down below. And you and if you do buy it, you do get a full PDF guidebook. It took me a while to find it, uh, but it is 121 pages. It's lots of information. It's really easy to digest and easy to understand. So you can really get into the symbolism of this deck and really enjoy it. Uh, I hope you guys enjoyed it. And I, I am going to go right back to Kelly's live chat right now. She's still on. <laughs> And hopefully this uploads and I can tell everyone that it's up. So yeah, I'll see you guys later. Bye.